We're going to talk about Top Off and NTOP today, shaping the future, in fact. So by the end of today, we're going to do about a 10, 12 minute talk today. We're going to learn about you know, what NTOP, or sorry, what Top Off is and why we use it. We're going to understand how NTOP is solving problems with traditional problems associated with Top Off, right? Some softwares are still doing it in ways that have some issues. Learn what's new with NTOP's topology optimization. And we're going to do a little bit of a live walkthrough. I am a applications engineer. I do demos. So you're going to get a demo. That's what we're going to do. And then hang out, ask some questions, take a look at some parts, have a conversation. So what is Top Op and why are engineers leveraging it? Well, topology optimization is a lightweighting technique that maximizes the performance of your part by removing material that's not contributing to the part's strength or stiffness, right? Now there's two schools of thought. There's generative design, there's topology optimization. We have topology optimization. There is a difference, right? It's easiest explained. Generative design starts from nothing, grows into something. Topology optimization starts from something and subtracts away to expose the optimized material. Now it's not just an inverse process. There's different mathematical backgrounds. Generative design is a probabilistic model based on machine learning and AI. Essentially, that means it's guessing if it's got a good answer or not. Uh, while topology optimization is a deterministic process and actually converges on a solution according to your objectives and constraints. So you always get a higher performing value or answer because of that process, right? So it's a little bit better in that way. Now, why do we do it? Save money and material, pretty much everyone's idea here. Can we make it lighter? Can we make it cheaper? Everybody likes that. But also reclaim some valuable engineering time. It's pretty much impossible for a design engineer to manually optimize the part as well as that topology optimization process can do so and also just better performing parts in general. Can we maximize our parts performance, minimize our mass, stiffness to weight ratios, all sorts of things, uh, and that process is gonna be really uh, powerful. But there are some traditional pitfalls with traditional softwares, right? Geometry extraction, right? STLs, nobody likes those things, they're not fun. Taking your result and turning it into something smooth and usable is traditionally really difficult, painful. Also manufacturing method negligence, right? If we know our printing process, we can only have an overhang of 40 degrees. If we don't take that into account, we can get some really unprintable structures and that's not really beneficial at all. But also lengthy and expensive design cycles, right? Doing it in some other softwares can take a significant amount of time and effort for each design iteration and in that cycle. And NTOP can speed that up quite a bit. So how's NTOP solving this? One, automated geometry reconstruction. If you guys haven't looked into NTOP's top up before, taking that rough result, smoothing it, you know, getting it into something that you would actually produce can be really difficult in a lot of softwares, but in NTOP it's an automatable process. It's really quite quick. Also robust manufacturing constraints. If we know our printing direction, we can make sure we have a self-supporting structure. If we want to produce via three or five axis machining or injection molding, we can also produce parts that are manufacturable via those methods right away, right? No secondary work needed. But then we can also do end-to-end -end optimization, make a process from start to finish and iterate through that very, very quickly. Now, what's new? There are a couple of new things, and I already told you about them because I got ahead of myself. Demolding constraint, making sure we can do you know, casting or injection molding processes with our topology optimization. We also have three and five axis uh, milling constraints, uh, but we have three and five axis milling constraints. Uh, and also this idea here called CAD face preservation, where we know we have some very specific mounting locations. We've already done our CAD work to make them as perfect and precise as we want them. So in this process, don't touch those faces, preserve them exactly as they are, so we don't have to redo any of that work at the end. All right, let's demo it up. Let's dive into the software. So, all right, this is NTOP. I know one of you have seen it before, <laughs> but uh, this is what we want to end up with, right? This is our nice, smooth, optimized model. And the question that most people have is, how hard is it to get to this process, right? How hard is it to get here at the end of the day? So let's back up. Before we look at this nice shiny part, let's go back to the beginning. And we start from an imported CAD, uh, imported CAD assembly, right? So NTOP's not a CAD tool. We're here to work with your CAD tools and then do the stuff that we do best, which is complicated work. So we're going to start by importing from SOLIDWORKS, Spaceplane, CATIA, uh, you know, Creo, and we have a whole list over here on, on our wall. You can, you can come from basically any CAD tool, import into NTOP, and we can do assemblies and parts. And what I have here is my design volume, right? I have all my connection features, everything's looking good, and this is the volume that I want to optimize. But this is not an initial design, right? This is not what I was gonna hand to my boss and say, let's go produce that. It's just a solid brick of material. It's the entire volume where that part's allowed to exist. You can kind of think of it like a complex bounding box in that way. Nothing outside of here will form. Right? So once I have that set up, 
got that all done. Now I need to start to go ahead and set up my FEA because topology optimization is an FEA style process. I need to take my part, I need to turn it into a volumetric mesh, nice 10 elements, all that sort of good stuff. And on this mesh, I need to start selecting different boundary conditions. So I can go ahead and start to select my different nodes. Say I have forces, fixed faces, moments, point moments. I can set up all those loading cases and boundary conditions that I need to, to say, optimize for these scenarios, right? So I breeze past FEA a little bit because you can't really change how FEA works. You're setting up this FEA inside of the software. And then you're able to come to the topology optimization here, and you're able to start to set up your objectives and your constraints. And this is where you can really start to customize. If we take a look in here, we have a lot of different responses. Structural compliance, I can be maximizing my stiffness. We can have stress values, displacement values, natural frequency, mass, center of mass, moments of inertia. All of these can be my objective to minimize or maximize those values. And then you can also be applying constraints inside of there. You could do things like planar symmetry, passive regions, specific overhang angles. So in our printing direction, don't give me anything beyond a 45 degree overhang, all sorts of stuff like that. Don't give me a value of stress over 100 megapascals, displacement, natural frequency, all sorts of stuff. But if you come into our beta tab here, we also happen to have uh, quite a number of functions that are coming out here in the near future. We have remap, we have minimum and maximum feature size. Don't give me a beam below five mil in beam thickness, right? I don't wanna print anything quite that small. Don't give me a beam above 30 mil in thickness because it's just gonna be too much of a mass of material in one location. We could also do things like the three, the five axis and the demolding. So we're always adding new things to our topology optimization processes to give it more customizability and get you that purely optimized result for your scenarios. Now, once you set all of that up, you come over here to your top op and you say, all right, do all those objectives and constraints and you get to a result that looks something like this, right? Now this computation can take one minute, it can take 10 hours, depends on what you set up. But once you run through this computation, for my money, this is where the work really starts with topology optimization. We talked earlier about kind of taking this raw result here and trying to take this surface texture into something smooth and usable because you're not gonna print that out, right? It's got stress concentrations, it's got a weird texture, it's, it's not something you wanna hand into your boss and say, let's, let's go for this. And traditionally with a lot of softwares, they give you a mesh, an STL. You have to sculpt, smooth, decimate, and do all this stuff by hand, and draw the NURBS by hand at the end. It's a long process. It could take hours or days of time. But in NTOP, I can come here to this block called Smooth and Body, and in about one minute of computation time, I can do that. Right? And it's a fully automated process. I don't have to touch it at all. So this process here is a huge time saver, a huge value add. But you also notice... I did smooth away some critical features here, right? It's a global smoothening operation. But what I'm able to do, thanks to the fact that I'm working in NTOP, is go ahead and grab these features out in 3D space and perform a basic Boolean operation, put them back exactly where they need to be. So I've got my nice, sharp, exact connection features, my smooth, optimized geometries, all coming together to what I'm gonna call our initial design, right? So now we've got this nice optimization. Then what are we gonna do? Well, we're probably gonna validate this through an FEA simulation, right? At this point, I could do this simulation here in NTOP because we have some simulation. We could also connect to any of our other partners, ANSYS, Abacus, Nastran, LS, Dyna, Intact, Com, yeah, wherever we need to go. We can run our simulations wherever to validate our designs. Now we can find out here at this point, our design works, our design fails, and go back through that automated process and iterate very quickly to get to a design that does work if we don't have one. But one thing that I find really interesting is, okay, if we have this design here and it's looking pretty good, Maybe we have a big factor of safety. With a lot of tools, it's hard to keep working on something like this. It's really hard to keep working on. The NURB surfaces are gonna be complex. It's not gonna like making changes to it. And it can really slow down or become pretty impossible, especially to make this hollow. Right? If you want a shallow geometry like this in a, a traditional CAD software, I wouldn't suggest it. <laughs> it's gonna take you a long time and a lot of Tylenol to get through that process. Uh, but in NTOP, I can absolutely do that essentially instantaneously. Uh, in NTOP, offsetting and shelling is, is essentially free. So not only can I shell this geometry, I can actually shell it so that it is thicker in some areas. So I have a completely solid part over here in some areas. And I have a thinner walled structure in others, directly according to that simulation data that we ran earlier. So not only with NTOP can you run through this topology optimization process, customize it to the fullest extent of the possibilities to get the correct answer for you, you can keep working with it to maybe push that optimization even further, right? 
So the complexity here with NTOP solution, it's not gonna be your limiting factor. Limiting factor is gonna be your timetable, right? How many iterations can you actually get through? How far can you optimize that design? So that's a little bit of a look at our software. I think what's really also helpful is to come back to these slides and take a look at a couple of case studies really quickly. We do a lot of topology optimizations with our customers. One that I think is really quite interesting are these custom grippers. So for these robotic grippers over here, the idea was to run them through a topology optimization process, make them lighter now at the end of the day. 40% lighter, 35% cheaper to go ahead and produce, but it only took them three hours of active design time to come up with this really unique design over here with lattice structure and topology optimization all in one. But the really impressive part is from design, you know, start to manufactured and on the robot was four days. And that's a really hard timetable to beat with traditional methods. So it's something that can, can really speak to the value of running through this optimization process with NTOP. Additionally here, Okada Group, they really take it to the next level on topology optimization. Uh, in fact, I believe this bot is somewhere here uh, at the conference that you guys can go and find. But by weight, this robot, which uh, packs groceries into the specific bins automatically through orders, is 50% by weight 3D printed components, all of which are run through NTOP's topology optimization in a fully automated fashion. Right? Pretty much no design engineer really touches this at the end of the day, or at least very minimally ends up realistically having hands-on time. So they're automating the design of this through topology optimization to reduce the weight as much as possible, increase the efficiency of their bot, and take advantage of NTOP's reusable workflows and computational modeling approach to get to this optimized result at the end. So these guys are really taking it to the, the next level. They reduce their weight by three times, so big, big reduction in weight, and they're able to design this entire bot in three weeks. So really big deal at the end of the day. And these are just a couple of case studies. We have a few more here on the parts on the table. But thank you guys very much for coming to listen to me talk today.